over 3,000 feet above sea level, miles from anywhere, in the Cradle Mountain Reserve in Tasmania. At this time of the year, it's very cold here, and only a few moments ago, it was raining very heavily. In that mountain range behind me, a young fellow has become hopelessly lost. He left his car about three hours ago to go for a short hike. At that time, the weather was fine, but an hour later, it closed in on him, and it wasn't long before he wandered off the track. Instead of seeking shelter and waiting for the weather to clear, he tried to make it back to his car, and he wandered deeper into the mountains. The combination of low temperatures, the rain, and cold wind quickly exhausted him. He stumbles quite frequently, which is one indication of an advanced stage of exposure. The other indications are mental deterioration, abnormality of vision, loss of muscular control, heart and respiratory failure, and finally, death. Anyone going into the bush or the mountains without thorough preparation can be sure he's in constant company, unwanted as it may be. Now that customer who got off the track, George, uh, I'll be hoping that my transfer comes through soon, like, with us being so busy and no extra pay. I'm feeling mighty tired myself, Harry. If these frightful nits only looked after themselves like and could cope with this country, <laughs> we'd have a bit more spare time. Hello, hello. What have we got here then? Yeah, how does a brick? <laughs> he must have thought he'd find a chef to cook it for him. Yeah, that's no good. Henry Blake inexperienced bushwalker deceased. Yeah, well, better get on with the job. There could be others soon. <coughs> oh, Corey's heavy. Yeah, ooh. And I thought the removalist job would be a soft one. worry about these, George. Thank heavens for that. Yeah, although, ooh, all me bunions tell me that there's rotten weather coming up. Yeah, I'll tell you what, we can save ourselves a lot of work if we follow these characters, just in case. Oh, no. Uh, what about this fella? <laughs> Don't worry about him. <laughs> he won't run off. <laughs> I reckon you're wasting your time. You and your mad hatter ideas. Oh, well, since you're in charge. Longer, we might. Yeah, at last. Oh, I thought they were going to keep this up forever. But let's have a spell. I often wonder why they miss around in the mountains. Good afternoon. Oh, hi. Oh, what are you people doing out here in this kind of weather? We're on a winter training trip. But whatever makes you come up here, though? Well, we like coming into the mountains at this time of the year. Aren't you afraid you'll become lost? Not really. Before we go on any trip into the bush or into the mountains, we make sure that we're pretty well prepared. Well, it must be pretty fit. Well, it does help, although it's just as important to have good equipment and to have on the party at least one experienced bushwalker that can handle any emergencies. Could you explain some of your party's equipment for us? Sure. Of course, the right clothing is very important. This parker is both waterproof and windproof, and underneath it I'm wearing a woolen sweater, woolen shirt, trousers, socks. 
And of course, strong boots are a must in this sort of country. Why do you wear so much wool? Well, in Tassie, the temperatures can be almost freezing, and well, we could still be wet because of rain or melting snow. Wet wool still retains the body temperature. These waterproofs, well, they keep out the wind, the rain and the snow and keep the body heat in. Could we have a look at your tents? Yes. They're made from Japan and weigh about four pounds each. Properly pitched, they're most reliable, even in very bad weather conditions. And those sleeping bags look warm and comfortable? Yes, they're filled with down. For various reasons, mainly to help us locate it, a lot of our equipment is brightly coloured. Do you always stop this early in the afternoon? Oh, no. But the weather seems to be deteriorating and there's some bad country up ahead. So we decided not to push ourselves beyond our limits and, well, end up with a bad case of exposure on our hands. What would you do if you were caught out on the mountains overnight without your tent and your sleeping bags? Well, this rarely happens to experienced bushwalkers. In our club, we stress the importance of knowing what to do when we come face to face with certain problems. This is the reason for this training session. In fact, two of our fellows are going to bivouac out tonight. If you'd like to come with me, we'll see how they're getting on. Hang on, you only look to be walking slow, but I'm having trouble keeping up with you. <laughs> Conserve your energy. A steady walk will get you much further than trying to rush. You're talking about exposure. How do you treat that sort of thing? Well, the main thing is to keep your patient warm. For example, put him in a sleeping bag and pitch a tent over him so that he has some shelter. Oh, and you should never give an exposure victim alcohol. It could kill him. If he can still take food, easily digested food, such as sugar and hot drinks are the best. Our club runs regular training sessions so that walkers learn to recognise exposure and know how to treat it. Well, here we are. You can see what they've done. They've selected a sheltered area and have protected it even more with ground sheets. They're out of the wind and with that fire going, they'll survive the night all right. How do you feel about spending your night out here in the open without your sleeping bags? Well, we've got plenty of wood over there, good bedding, and with all the scrub brines cutting, we should be okay. What sort of food do you take on these trips? Lightweight, dehydrated food. If you want to enjoy your trip, it's essential to have a good campsite and the right food. Well, I'm hungry too. Oh, shut up. seems to thrive in this sort of country. Okay, it's going relax. <laughs> hey, caught any lunch yet? Give me a bit of time, will you? Time we've got. Yeah, yeah. It's been quiet lately. Could be we're in for a bit of relaxation. <laughs> At last. That's what you think. Okay. Oh, look at that. Won't they ever learn? 